Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to be doing an LED conversion in my dash today. I mean, as you can see, as you can tell, this back bulb is dead. Um, and this is an 09 Chevy Trailblazer. So pretty much the all the Trailblazers are going to be the same. Um, any really GM cluster that looks like this is going to be close to it. But for the Trailblazers in general... To get to the cluster, which if you've watched my video on how to do the radio, it's the same exact thing. There's a screw right down here next to your, here's your two 12 volt um, cigarette lighters. There's a screw right here. Then there's a screw in the dash right here, this hole. And then also the other hole over here, right here. And those are all Phillips screws. Then you take a small flathead and you pop the little, um, the circles off. Uh, let me see if I can get this to focus. I wish I had a light. But there's the two little circle plastic pieces from the bottom, you pop those off. And those are eight millimeter um, nut uh, headed bolts. And then there are, more, there are more Phillips screws. There's one here, here, and here. Now in the, in the inside, and the dash will pop apart. Now if you go to my video on, um, installing the radio that is in way more detail and would probably uh, help you out there but I'm just trying to do this quickly I have a limited time on this okay so now I have the trim panel off now when you took all those screws out you start down here with your fingers and you just slowly run up and start popping it off now it may be tough around here but it does pop off now you have to unplug the connections are the um, your light switches over here. These are just two plugs. These are just two plugs, and then your um, your windshield wiper. And if you had four wheel drive, would be right here. It's just a simple uh, plug again. And then down here for your um, your cigarette lighters. Those are just simple clips too. Boom, it's gone. It's out. Then what you do is you put your steering wheel all the way down as far as it can go and then you pull from the top and you get the the top to it comes out from the top and then to the this way and it'll slide between your um, shifter and then it's out I just put it in the back seat and now it's again seven millimeter bolts and there's four of them to get the cluster out and then obviously that clip right there and you are done you have the cluster out all right so now that I'm down in the workshop or I should call my workshop um, I'm going to show you how to prep to take this apart because this prep is the most important part of the whole job because if you don't get this right then when you go to put it back together the needles are not, are not going to read right and the last thing you need is your mile per hour to be reading wrong because who likes tickets? No one. So what you do once you get um, this the, the top clear piece off um, all it is is there's uh, like three clips on the top and like two on the bottom and this all you be very gentle but seriously you can just use your fingers and they just they, they pop right out and then then gently lift this off then take painters tape and you get a couple um, sizes here don't like push it on real hard because you don't want to leave residue on there but you can gently set it down it does stick and it doesn't move and get a marker that actually shows up on the painter's tape and stays there. Now, if also you're going to be changing your stepper motors in here while you're doing the LEDs, to check to know you you'll know obviously if the motor is bad. But if it's if it's real smooth to move like this, it's good to go. But if you have one that's really notchy or like doesn't even you know make a noise, then it's obviously obviously it's busted. So now what you do once you have the tape. Um, on here you take it and you slowly just get it all the way to its end point so you know like that that's as low as it goes on all of them and then you take the marker and you mark it right on the tip like right in line so you know that's exactly where you have to what you do when you put it back is you push it on and um, you push it down to make it where as far as it goes is right is exactly how it is right now We'll get to that later though. So now that you have each one of these marked and put in you know, the right positions, now 
you are able to pop these off. Now, some people use forks. I tend to use my hand if possible because I know I know how much torque is going on these. Now, it's probably going to take a little bit of um, power to actually pop these uh, needles off, but trust me, it works. If you take the fork and just put go through there and like slowly lift off, it does come off. But like like I said again, I like using my hands. So then I will show you once you get all of these needles off. Okay, so now that I have the needles off, now, like I said, if they came off right with my hands, I just put my fingers under it and then slowly just wiggled it back and forth and it popped off. Now make sure when you set them down, you put them exactly in the order they came off. So see how I have them set up right here? That's, your, that's the RPM one, goes right here. You know, there's the mile per hour one right here. Here's your four that go right over here, right in line how they go. And they need you need to make sure they go back on the same one. Even if they look like they're the same size, just, you know, put them back on the same one. And then uh, you should be good to go. All right, so now it's time to take the back off. And you got to be really careful because when you take the back off, the whole center board's going to come out. So I just took a screwdriver a flathead screwdriver and I was very careful and there I popped I started with the top and I popped all the there's tab right there tab right there tab right there over here on the side and then same over here and then there's also two tabs on on the bottom and then once that's uh, that's all popped off this top piece should just which of course I just snapped one back in This whole top piece should just lift right off. And now you're onto your center board. So the lights that light up the back of the cluster will be the ones in the white. So this one, that one, that one, that one, and then those four. That's your turn signals right here. All right, excuse the beep of the car. We all know that dreaded beep. Um, you need to figure out the polarity of the board because LEDs have polarity, those bulbs don't. So what you do is you take the board, leave the back plate on it and bring it in and plug it in and then only turn your, uh, your just your lights on so they show up. And as you can see, two of mine are dead over here. So then you take your new LEDs, which have a resistor on it. The resistor is always going to be the positive side. And you bring it in here. And for example, I'm going to do this one. And you set it on a light, touching the terminals. And see how I get that blue to light up? That means... Oh, come on, stay. Right there, how it lights up blue. Whatever side the resistor is facing use a marker and make a little tiny dot on the white um, by it uh, like I did right there on all of them so you know which way to place your LEDs when you go to solder them in so once you have you go through in each bulb you find which side makes it light up you mark the side which you know which which side the resistor will go on to and then, uh, you know, you just turn everything off, unplug it, and then bring it back down to your, uh, wherever you're working, and we can uh, solder these bulbs in. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a trick that makes this much easier. So, as you can see, I've already taken off three of the bulbs. Here, here, here. Now they're so loose, you seriously can just take your pliers carefully, grab it, and then just twist, I mean, I don't have, you just twist it and pop, it's right off. So that makes your removal of your lights much, much easier. So now, once you get them all removed, I have my soldering iron heating up right now. And I'll go in and I'll solder to, um, to this post. All right, let me grab my pointer. I will solder the negative. See, I have the dot right here. I'll solder my positive side right here and my negative side right there, and I'm done. Make sure, though, you try to get the bulb very low to the plate or um, the board, just like these. How, see how low these are? Try to cut 
um, some of the um, the leads off your LEDs so that you can make sure that um, the bottom of the bulb is as close to the board as possible so you get a better um, spread out light uh, into the inside or into the um, the, the fascia. Alright guys, so I have all the bulbs soldered in, as you can see, here, here. Now don't worry, the, the little brown is from the flux um, on my solder. But I also wanted to note, when you do solder these in, be as fast as possible, like two to three seconds on the solder joints, because more than that you can blow out LEDs or you just try to be as fast as possible. And also what I did is, um, how I pointed out uh, to show you where to solder the positive and negative to. I also used like the, the third and fourth holes. So like the negative goes on the bigger hole, but then I had it come over to this one. And then it's the positive starts on the bigger hole, but then goes over to the smaller one. Um, just because the stock bulbs uh, do that. I checked on how they come apart and that's that's how they do that. So now it's time to go to the car and see if uh, they all light up. All right, so here we go. Click my switch on. Boom. All of them light up. This is going to look awesome. Now you are ready to put your cluster back together. All right, so now it's time to finish putting it back together. Didn't miss anything here. All I did was took the top face plate and clicked it back to the to the, the main board and the back plate. So, you know, I just lined that up, pushed it in, clicked it in. And um, so now it's time to put your needles back on. And uh, that's, that's the most difficult part, and then from here it's cake. So when you put it on, you just have to line it up with the, um, and, and then you feel it, and then you push it on. Now see how it only, it only stops right there? Well, you can turn it without turning the stepper motor and that's how you line it up with the mark so then usually though what I do is once I've lined it up I go all the way around just to check to make sure everything's smooth and then I come back and see if it's perfectly lined up which it is and then I just give it you know just a little like make sure and it's lined up so this one's good to go and you just repeat that process for each one of these you can put it on any way you want as long as you push it on, <clears throat> so you just, there, pushed on, and then now see how it only stops here? Well, I can, I can turn it to right there, which I'm going to do an example of, say I turn, say you push it too far, okay, no problem, go back around all the way to the other side, and then bring it, push it this way, and that'll bring it back up, and boom, lined up, so you do that for the rest of these. Make sure they're all good to go. Then you can peel your tape off. All right, guys, I finished putting the needles on and I carefully peeled the tape off. Then I took like a microfiber and like I, I had hand or I had fingerprints on the screen right here. So I just wiped that off and I made sure there's no dust. I gave it a couple little like blows just to, cause you want this as clean as possible. Cause when you're about to put that top piece back on, you don't want anything trapped back there. So yeah, then then seriously, it's as simple as lining up the the trip indicator thing and just making sure it's clicked in on all sides real well. <clears throat> and done. Your cluster is um, good to go back in the car. Um, you know, just take like a microfiber with some Windex and clean your fingerprints off this uh, on the top. And then, yeah, it's just reverse order. Plugging it in a car, putting the four bolts in um, here and on the top. And uh, putting your trim back together and you're done. Alright, let's see what it looks like in the vehicle. Yeah. See, everything still functions. Now, obviously, I'm in a dark area right now. That's why it's on. So, um, or if it didn't come on right away, you just have to hit your your uh, headlight switch, and they'll come on. But there we go.
I think it looks fantastic. The only thing is I may go back in and move that one right there. It seems like it's just touching the 70 a little bit, a little high, just push it down and it'll spread out the, um, the brightness a little bit, but I probably will just leave it. But yeah, there we, there we go.